by facsimile from heaven. <laughs> the Bible, as we know it, was finally presided over by one man, the pagan emperor Constantine. I thought Constantine was a Christian. Oh, hardly. No, he was a lifelong pagan who was baptized on his deathbed. Constantine was Rome's supreme holy man. From time immemorial, his people had worshipped a balance between nature's male deities and the goddess, or sacred feminine. But a growing religious turmoil was gripping Rome. Three centuries earlier, a young Jew named Jesus had come along, preaching love and a single God. Centuries after, Christ's followers had grown exponentially and had started a religious war against the pagans. Or did the pagans commence war against the Christians? We, we can't be sure who began the atrocities in that period. But we can at least agree that the conflict grew to such proportions that it threatened to tear Rome in two. So Constantine may have been a uh, lifelong pagan, but he was also a pragmatist. And in 325 Anno Domini, he decided to unify Rome under a single religion, Christianity. Christianity was on the rise. He didn't want his empire torn apart. And to strengthen this new Christian tradition, Constantine held a famous ecumenical gathering known as the Council of Nicaea. And at this council, the many sects of Christianity debated and uh, voted on, well, uh, everything from the acceptance and rejection of specific Gospels to the date for Easter to the ministering of the sacraments and, of course, the immortality of Jesus. I don't follow. Masha, until that moment in history, Jesus was viewed by many of his followers as a mighty prophet, as a great and powerful man, but a man. Of the man, immortal man, not the son of God, not even his nephew twice removed, not even his nephew twice removed, not the son of God, not even his nephew twice removed. Uh, hold on, you're saying Jesus' divinity came from a vote? Well, remember, in those days, gods were everywhere. By infusing Jesus the man with the divine magic making him capable of uh, earthly miracles, as well as his own resurrection, Constantine turned him into a god, but within the human world. And he basically knocked the more distant gods out of the game. Facts for many Christians. Jesus was mortal one day and divine the next. Yes. Absurd. There was even a formal announcement. Yes. Absurd. There was even a formal announcement. Excuse me. Who is God? Who is man? ولكنكم الآن تطلبون أن تقتلوني وأنا إنسان قد سلمكم بالحق الذي سمعه من الله وأنا إنسان قد سلمكم بالحق الذي سمعه من الله قال لها يسوع لا تلمسيني لأني لم أصعد بعد إلى أبي ولكن اذهبي إلى إخوتي وقولي لهم إني أصعد إلى أبي وأبيكم وإلهي وإلهكم وإلهي وإلهكم فقالت الجموع هذا يسوع النبي الذي من معصرة الجديد Excuse me Who is God? Who is man? How many have been murdered over this question? show you. When to put this gun down, I only want you both to listen. I'm listening now. For 2,000 years, the church has reigned oppression and atrocity upon mankind. Crushed passion and idea alike, all in the name of their walking God. Jesus must be shown for what he was. Not miraculous, simply. Man, the dark con be exposed. Mankind can, finally, be set free, and we can do it, Robert. Now, listen to this. It's from the Gospel according to Philip. Philip? 
Yes, it was rejected at the Council of Nicaea, along with any other Gospels that made Jesus appear human and not divine. And the companion of the Savior is Mary Magdalene. My dear, that's Mary Magdalene. The prostitute? She was no such thing. Smeared by the church in 591 Anno Domino Pud. What? Yes, it was rejected at the Council of Nicaea, along with any other Gospels that made Jesus appear human and not divine. And the companion of the Saviour is Mary Magdalene. Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her. But this on says the... nothing of marriage. Well, Actually, um, Robert. Actually, in those days, the word companion literally meant spouse. And this is from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene herself. She wrote a Gospel? And Peter said, did he prefer her to us? And Levi answered, Peter, I see you contending against a woman like an adversary. If the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? If that were true, it's adding insult to injury. Why? If that were true, it's adding insult to injury. Why? The modern church has a monopoly on that. In salvation through Jesus Christ. In salvation through Jesus Christ. And he who keeps the keys to heaven rules the world. The Catholic Inquisition soon publishes what may be the most blood-soaked book in human history. The Malaeus Maleficarum. The Witch's Hammer. It instructed the clergy on how to locate, torture, and kill all free-thinking women. In three centuries of witch hunts, 50,000 women are captured, burned alive at the stake. Oh, at least that. Some say millions. Imagine then, Robert. Kill all free thinking women. Kill all free thinking women. Kill all free thinking women. Incroyable. Pas tout à fait. It's called Scotoma. The mind sees what it chooses to see. You must explode the truth onto the world. It's your duty. It's your duty. وهذه هي الحياة الأبدية أن يعرفوك أنت الإله الحقيقي وحدك ويسوع المسيح الذي أرسلته أيها الناس قد جاءكم الرسول بالحق من ربكم فآمنوا خيرا لكم وإن تكفروا فإن لله ما في السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما